Praise the Lord. You reach past the Priscilla Hall. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for being holy and righteous, pure and true. We thank you for the sincerity and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that you shared abroad your people to give us the ability to live, to move, and have our very being in you. We thank you, God, because you can preserve, protect, and keep. From strongholds, entrapment that would otherwise displease you. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for making the avenue to obey and do your will. That we can worship you and the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, God, that you are omnipresent. You're not limited by location. You're not limited by condition. You're not limited by humanity. You're not limited in any way. And that's a blessing, God, of who you are. We can live our life freely, not concerned about entrapment, because you are a holy God that knows all things. And you know the truth. And it's the truth that gives us the joy, the freedom for the victory of being in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's something about Obeying God and continue to do what thus says the Lord. He blesses all that he sanctifies, all that he decrees, all of his will. He blesses. Because it is he who is the blesser. And no one can orchestrate it or take it away. And so if you would turn with me to Psalms 119, um, actually one, let me see, 117, Psalms 117, one through two. And actually it is the shortest Psalm in the writing of Psalms. Psalms 117, verses 1 through 2, and it reads as thus. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Foundational truths. Foundational truths. Foundational truths. I am so thankful to God that if you've been listening to these recordings, you understand the foundational truth of God. He makes available, however he decrees, the proclamation of his revelation, of his prophetic messages, of his word. He makes available to all who want to seek and receive, because that is the type of God that we have. He has a way of establishing individually what he wants. That's why it's about the will of God, the purpose of God, 
the plan of God and the orchestrated execution of God's perfect and divine will to be fulfilled. Now, the foundational truth is the exhortation to praise God. We can praise God through the proclamation of his word. We can praise God in many ways. The purpose of the Bible is to be used as an instrument to connect you with the mind of Christ through the spirit of Christ. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew 24 through 35. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Scripture exposes our adversity within and without us. The Father is glorified when we bear fruit and become disciples, John 15, 7. We are cleansed through his word, John 15, 3. Cleanse meaning it discerns our thoughts and the intents, intents of our thoughts and it discerns our hearts. And so we learn from scripture that the word really examines the believer's life. It examines us in the faith to determine our motives, to determine our will, to determine. As the Bible says, that it's a discerner of our thoughts and the intent of our heart. So then the word of God is used to really reveal who we are and all its entirety of what we're doing. The Bible says that our mind is cultivated through the word, Psalms 119.11. It also says that we receive wisdom, godly wisdom, Psalms 119.98 and Psalms 111.10. We have peace through God, Psalms 119.165. The word of God can stop stumbling blocks, Psalms 119, 105. It can help us from being pulled into stumbling blocks. Because thy word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Feet is just a way of life. Feet is just lifestyle, the way you live. It's a walk. And he said, he will feed us with the integrity of our heart and lead us skillfully with his hands. It's a part of our life, 119.11 and 80. It gives us sound doctrine and statutes. It's a refuge. The word of God is a refuge. Psalms 119 and 114. It's a hiding place. It's a shield. It's a hope in his word. The word of God also keeps us from bondage. John 8, 32 and Psalms 25, 9. The word is the truth. Anything that's the truth it is revealed. It gives you discernment of what is true and what is not. It gives you discernment as what is correct and acceptable in the will of God and what is unacceptable in the will of God. No matter what humanity may say or not say or do or not do, the word of God clearly divides asunder what is acceptable and what is unacceptable in the perfect will of God. Is it is the Lord that gives. And so when you understand it's the Lord setting in order and giving, 
You can stay committed unto the Lord to receive what God has said he would do. And that is to stop you from falling into stumbling blocks, thinking someone can give when it's only coming from God, which is so vital and instrumental because it allows you to operate under the anointing that only God can give. And when you're operating under the anointing that only God can give, you have joy and peace and steadfastness to continue to please the holy and righteous God. Psalms 116, 12 says, what shall I remember unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? A consecrated vessel Romans 12, 1 through 3. 1 Thessalonians 4, 4. Possess our vessels in sanctification and honor. Will everyone will know how to abstain from things that are displeasing to God? We live in a world that many people will try to pull you into their agenda. Some will use bullying. Some will use enticement. Some will use setups. Some will use deceit to try to make you something or say you're something that God never defined you as. But God is giving you power through his word, through his impartation of the Holy Spirit to not be consumed by the environment to not be consumed by what the exterior factors are doing. In other words, no human can define adequately and fulfill the mandate of God upon your life. It can only be manifested through the empowerment of God. That's why he tells us to enter into his presence and to receive the fullness of his joy. Psalms 116, 11. To enter into his presence and receive the fullness of his joy. His presence is omnipresent. I can enter into his presence wherever I'm at and receive the fullness of his joy. Thanksgiving and praise is God's character, who he is. He's all powerful. He's loving, he's kind, and it overflows in our hearts and in our thoughts as his words discern what we meditate on and what our hearts desire. We worship him in holiness because of the Holy Spirit. So then we have a committed mind, a committed heart, and a committed life unto him. We're in proper standing with him. And proper standing with him is that we are justified in Christ Jesus, the relationship was established by him. It was nurtured through him. It was developed with him. With an expectation of a glorified body through him. So we're able to rejoice and accept the access in which he has given us. We have answered prayers through John 15, 7. 
We have spiritual fruitness through John 15, 5. We have peace in the storms, John 16, 33. And we have a robe of righteousness, Philippians 3, 9. We put on the garment of praise. We put on the armor of God. And those elements are not made by human hands. They're made by God's spiritual orchestration. He speaks and it comes into existence. We have accepted Jesus Christ is the king, the protector, the omnipotent one. He's also our priest, our provider, our everlasting Lord. He's a prophet, omniscient, all-knowing, our maker, our decision that we accept because we know him to be able to fulfill all things. Now, with this holy and righteous God that can preserve us, let's talk about preservation. Preservation is when you can be in various places and God's Holy Spirit will preserve you. It will stop you from bringing yourself into entrapment. He gives you wisdom and how to respond and conduct yourself. He gives you wisdom and how to not fall for the allurements and the deceit and folly that can quite often and trapped us. The Bible says, the Lord shall be from preserve thee from all evil. And Psalm 16. And that is what we have to hold on to. Psalm 16. Jesus thus, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. The word of God is truth. It can preserve you because you put your trust in the preserver. The preserver can keep you. It can keep you from falling. It keeps you in your righteous, proper position, your righteous, proper standing in him. No one can pull you down. If your trust is in the Lord and you're preserved by it, no one can take. If your trust is in the Lord and you're preserved by it, no one can have. If your trust is in the Lord and you're preserved by it, because God is the preserver. He does the upholding. He does the giving. And he also does the keeping. He goes on to say that he can show us the path of life. Not only does he preserve us, he shows us the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. It is something about the joy of God that he places within you that you can't fully explain. It's not based on people. You don't have to be around no one and have his joy. You don't have to be accepted by humanity and still have his joy. 
because your acceptance is in him. You don't even have to be in agreement with any humanity and have the Father's joy. He said, I'll show you the path of life. In my presence, his joy is in his presence. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. He gives us when we bow at his feet and abide in his hands and heart as we go to his throne and receive what only he can give and honor him in reverence and godly fear to keep us from anything that will be displeasing in his sight so that we don't fall for stumbling blocks. We don't become entangled in the things that God never decreed. So you can treat one another in the holiness that he has placed within our lives, but you don't have to be concerned of stumbling blocks or entrapment. Because God knows all things before we even imagine them or bring our plans into fruition. God knows and his counsel will stay. He's a preserver. People can't preserve you. God can. So he talks in his Bible about the many things he preserves. He says, the grass wither, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. He preserves his word, Isaiah 48. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119, 89. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Psalms 12, 6 through 7. Matthew 5, 8. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tilt shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. John 1, 1 through 51. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He's preserving his word. Therefore, I love thy commandment above gold, yea, above fine gold. Psalms 119, 127. When God preserves you, he's keeping you from falling into the entrapment, the deceitfulness, the stumbling blocks, where you will put your trust in things and in people over the holy and righteous God. That's why in Psalms 16, he, it says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. When God preserves you, he's keeping your trust in him. Trust in the Lord. At all times. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Lean not towards your own understanding. At all times acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. That is a correlationship to him preserving you. 
To be preserved is to trust in God. To be kept is to trust in God. To be in the presence of God and be filled with the fullness of joy is to trust in God. It is not about agenda. It is a trust and a holy and spiritual, eternal, pre-existent God. We come to the fruition of his preservation abilities when we trust him. When we trust in his name, when we trust in his power, when we trust in his purpose, when we trust in his provisions, and when we trust in his love, and when we trust in his giving, The truth, the word is his truth. The word is his truth. Behold, I am the Lord, thy God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32, 27. To trust God is not about where you are sitting. It's the position in which he has you to sit in. The position in which you abide in. You abide in him. He said it at the right hand of the Father. You are seated in him. Seated in him. That assures you. Of his ability to preserve you. And keep you. God is so. Brilliant. And the ways he speaks to us. And letting us know and showing us of his surety that we are pleasing in his sight when we trust in him. And when you ask God to preserve you, you're asking God to keep you from others' plans, from others' doing that you're not aware of and you have no participatory agenda. That can be used wherever you're at. You see, David had problem and distrust of what was going on. And he was fleeing to God for preservation. He was hoping that God could keep him from what was coming up against him. Many times we can be at places and we can be around certain situations that we are not intricately involved in. But yet God can preserve us. He can set us in him as we stand in his righteous position that he justifies us to be able to be kept, preserved, 
from what is going on. So he finds us faultless because we're not partakers. And we're pleasing in his sight. And that's the best position and condition you can find yourself in the Lord when he preserves you. A preservation that only comes from God. Preservation that only comes from God. No matter where you're at. I can sit in a church office and be preserved. I can sit in my home and be preserved. I can sit on my job and be preserved. No matter where I'm at, I can be preserved by God because he's keeping me in his loving care and his providential care. Working out all things, seen and unseen, to fulfill his perfect will for my life. He's God. And he's able to keep your eyes stayed on him. As he continues to reveal the things that are necessary through his outpouring to show you how he's preserving. He can preserve you when everybody around you don't even know what he's doing. Because the preserving is about you individually. For what he's orchestrating and planning in your life. So you're not moved by what you see. Because that's irrelevant. You're not shaken by what happens. Because the foundation of the Lord is sure. And so that becomes irrelevant because you have the foundational truth. And you're not moved by sight, shaken by the environment condition. Nor Lacking faith because you think you're going through it alone. In fact, your faith becomes increased because your foundational proof is that the truth of the Lord endures for them. He will always bring forth truth. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. He brings forth the truth. Many people can think you are part of something that you're not. You can be at a place and everybody can be doing whatever they think is right. And you don't have to be a part of it. You can continue with joy in the Lord doing whatever God has you doing. And God can preserve you as a light pleasing 
in his sight as he continued to reveal for you as you endure what you don't even know is going on and you don't need to know. It's not necessary to know. Why? Because your mind is stayed on Christ and he has so much more to pour into you that you don't need to focus on the unnecessary. Thy word is truth. It leads you and guides you through everyday life activity. What does his word say? How to deal with situation? How does God view this situation? We are to love one another, treat one another the way they want to be treated, but still allow his word to be truth and ask. You give an explanation of your hope in the Lord what the word of God says through the outpouring of his Holy Spirit, what is true. Now, with the Lord, because he's omnipresent, no location can consume him. So as you are seated in him and righteous standing through being justified through him, you're able to progressively maintain the foundation that he has built for you to live upon. And even if stumbling blocks would come or entrapments, God is able to navigate you around the stumbling blocks and around the entrapments. As you continue to abide in him, and he abide in you. The beauty of who God is. See, with the Lord, there are no loopholes. We know in the legal terminology, loopholes, loop, a loophole is basically a technicality that allow, allows one to escape violating the law through some activity. Common loopholes are found in various fields, such as in taxes and avoiding tax, as well as political issues, such as political donations. But with God, his word is clear. There are no loopholes. In other words, you can't outsmart God and circumvent around the word of truth to deceive. Unlike loopholes, in legal, loop, in legal law can be established with every law 
Someone can find a loophole around the law to get you off. But with God, there is no loophole. It has to go through him. The forgiveness. The pardon. And so then, God looks at your thoughts and the intents of your heart. And he makes the righteous judgment based on knowledge, wisdom. But in the legal system where humanity operates within the law, for your lawyers, your judges, and all of your legal institution. They can quite often find loopholes. A very, very excellent, brilliant lawyer can normally find some type of technicality to get you off. That's their job, to find loopholes. But with the word of God, there's no one more brilliant no one who upholds his word of truth other than the Lord Jesus. So there are no loopholes. Your ability to try to find a technicality to receive a loophole from the word of God is unfounded. It's impossible. So therefore, what's impossible with humanity is only made possible with God. That's just how God operates. He makes sure And that his word is upheld by his power. You can't penetrate. You can't defile his word. You can't mutilate and receive the result. You can't add and you can't take away his word. It can't be done. Even in the medical field, there could be medical malpractice attorneys and they can find loopholes or they can change the law so that some are not responsible for medical malpractice that have been done. And so they can find loopholes through that. But with God, his word, you cannot add nor take away anything from his writing. He upholds all things by the power of his word. the power of his word. The power of his word. That's why he gives the gifts. And the gifts allows 
who he gives them to, to operate and abilities that human would not be able to do on their own. He'll bring understanding, the word of knowledge. He'll bring wisdom, the word of wisdom. He brings all of those elements to give abilities that we wouldn't otherwise have. That's why you don't have to worry about in God's kingdom operating like the world does. In the world, we can quite often dictate plans of action and establish and dictate a purpose to fulfill. We can determine who will be in those positions. We can determine what their responsibilities will be. We can determine the groups and the teams to execute an agenda, a business plan, if we want to make it about that. But in God's kingdom, he does all the determination. He selects. He determines the responsibilities. The orchestration. The fulfillment and execution of his plan. He implements and gives out the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the power, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The seven spirits of God in the writings of Revelation reference to the Holy Spirit and the perfection of his manifold ministry. Isaiah 11, 11 2 also references the Holy Spirit using a sevenfold description. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The prophecy is that the Messiah will be empowered, not by seven individual spirits, but by one spirit that would incarnate all of the seven elements that was previously his manifold ministry. And so with his manifold ministry, we understand the correlationship of the Holy Spirit that works within us that works within our life
in a way that he is glorified. Because Jesus even made the correlation. No one can come to the Father except through the Son. So he understood that it was all about the Father getting to the Father, that you had to go through him because he paid the price for you. He didn't pay the price to the devil. He satisfied the requirement of the Father for you to be in right standing with him. Justified by faith. Made righteous by him. his omniscience, his omnipresent. His perfection and completion. Something that we very seldom acknowledge or desire his perfection and completion through the through his holy spirit he can perfect he can complete he sends the holy spirit from the Father. And so, if God is orchestrating all things through his perfection and completion, through his Holy Spirit, he determines. We don't. And whatever he say shall come to pass because he upholds all things by the power of his word. And that settles it. It, it. it settles everything in all eternity. God ensures that our thoughts and our hearts are perfected in him and complete. So that we won't fall into stumbling blocks. We won't become entangled into entrapments. That we will operate within the outpouring of his spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, and interpretation. They're there because of God. For his perfection and completion. To fulfill his perfect plan. Which his counsel shall stand.
Let us get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. This message, the word of truth, is such a profound message in him that whatever you're going through or whatever someone may make you think you are part of, you have to know that God is able to preserve you. And through that preservation, you don't have to be a part of it. If you're connected to a holy and righteous God. See, people can think whatever they want. They thought Jesus wanted to be the king of the world. When his kingdom was far greater than the world. Normally, whatever people think, because we're human and our thoughts are not his thoughts, nor our ways out, his ways. It's always lower than what God is doing. And so as you keep your faith and trust in the Lord, then you can be elevated in him through his higher thoughts and his higher way. The elevation is his higher thought and his higher ways that is far greater than humanity. The word, thy word, his word is true. Let us go to the Lord and pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for showing yourself so faithful. Thank you for your outpouring. Thank you, God. It's just you. Dwelling in your presence, abiding in your will, yielding to your spirit. Pleasing in your sight, full of your joy. Once again, you've done it again, Tommy. You preserve. You lose the obstacles. And you made yourself victorious. Thy word is true. And because thy word is true, you do the outcome. You do the selection. You do the establishment. You execute your plan. You make perfect and complete. You establish and settle. You uphold all things by the power of your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A preserver. Thy word is the truth. O oh Lord, preserve me, for oh, in thee do I put my trust. What preserves you is not about who has a problem, who likes you, who dislikes you, who wants you, who don't want you. What preserves you is that you put your trust and he will establish, settle, perfect, and determine his counsel, his will, and execute. That preserves. That preserves. You can never be preserved by humanity. The preservation is by God. Where do you put your trust? In humanity or God? Da, la, 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 that preserves you. Because he ultimately Controls everything. He's the preserver. He's the keeper. He's the righteous stand. He's the justifier. He's the sanctifier. He's the revealer. And no one has the power to orchestrate over his plan of action. That's why you can rest in his word. You can rest in his Holy Spirit. You can rest in his doing. You can rest in his knowledge. You can rest in his wisdom, because he's going to execute his will. You can rest in his power because he's the God of all flesh. His will will be over all flesh. And there is nothing too hard for him. Nothing. It's not what you see. With the cardinal mind and carnality eyes. It's what he places within you that gives you spiritual revelation. That there's nothing too hard for God. And that he preserves you.
And if he preserves you, then he's the one that gives. Determine what is given. What is orchestrated? How is orchestrated? Who orchestrates it? Where is orchestrated? We don't. That's why you don't have to hear or see. You don't have to fall into stumbling blocks. You hear and see in the spirit from the holy and righteous God. Who's revealing what only he can do. The Lord that's high and mighty, the God of all flesh. That no one can control or know until he reveals what he's doing. La 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 bata. La 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 bata. La 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 bata. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.